welcome here to more Talk FCB and welcome to the Champions League. Now, I know, yes, that Barca are sadly no longer in the Champions League this season. We are working very, very hard to try and get ourselves back there. But still, that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate some of the brilliant ties that are coming up this year. And that is why, coming up today, we are talking all about PSG. Against Real Madrid, we're going to have all the team news, all of the matchups, lineups, and predictions, because this promises to be a very, very entertaining spectacle between two teams with big aspirations. It is all coming up today, so let's get to it. Because if we do indeed kick off with the man himself, we have to talk coming into this game about Lionel Messi. Because how many times over the years have we seen this great man line up against Real Madrid and produce some truly unforgettable moments? But now, of course, he's got to do it in a different shirt. Now, of course, it's an entirely different proposition facing Real with Paris Saint-Germain. Because, of course, in the Champions League this season, I think Messi has been very, very impressive indeed. Five games, five goals to his name, including a stunning goal against Man City. He hit goals as well against RB Leipzig and indeed against Club Bruges. But, of course, there have also been question marks about his form in the league in France, given the fact there that in 14 games, Messi has only returned two solitary goals there. Of course, he has got seven assists. Of course, he has hit the woodwork as well on seven occasions. So things could have been very different. But those are still not the kind of numbers that you'd expect from the great that Messi still is. And I think one of the things that when I've been watching Messi throughout the season at Paris Saint-Germain, especially comparing the kind of positions that he's been taking up, the kind of areas where he receives the ball, compared, of course, with his time at Barca, I think there's very, very big differences. And I still don't feel that PSG know the best way to use Messi, to get Messi in the right positions to hurt the opposition. Because actually, when I watch Messi now, in many, many games, it reminds me of a few years ago with Argentina, whereby Messi had to drop so, so deep to receive the ball. To actually get on the ball, he had to come and get it himself because he wasn't receiving it from the midfield. He wasn't getting it in the right areas. And when you come that deep, you can't hurt teams. You don't want Messi there on the halfway line. You don't want Messi there dropping 40 yards from goal to come and get the ball. You want him receiving it in the danger zone so he can make that killer pass when he can make that killer finish. And I often see Messi looking around at PSG, waiting for a runner. When he's on the ball, he's looking for runs. He's looking for movement. But they still don't seem to understand the right areas to move into, where Messi can pick out those phenomenal passes. And so much of that for me, so much of that blame in terms of that style or lack of it has to fall at Pochettino's door. And I think coming into this game, there's massive pressure on Pochettino. He has to get it right against Real Madrid because if he doesn't, surely he doesn't survive. And honestly, I'm surprised that right now he's still in a job. I cannot believe that PSG, the hierarchy, often very ruthless at PSG, that they've been watching their displays this season and they've allowed Pochettino to continue the way that they've played, the lack of identity, the lack of ideas, with the amount of quality they have and the talent that PSG have got, it's just not been good enough from Pochettino. And of course, when you are looking head to head at the two teams this season in terms of league form and also what we've seen in the Champions League, what you can take away there, looking at the two teams alongside each other, that Mbappe and Benzema, in terms of goals, the two Frenchmen, very good friends, of course, lots of links there, of course, to Real Madrid for Kylian Mbappe, but he has been red hot in front of goal once again for them this season. And you can see how heavily Real Madrid rely on Benzema. Of course, when it comes to creativity as well. Mbappe and Benzema are there again. Messi is always going to be in those areas. And I think especially the duo between him and Mbappe. We saw it again in the weekend just gone. They are starting to combine more and more. And that partnership is definitely one to keep an eye on coming into this game. But I think the Benzema factor for Real Madrid, it's going to be so key to have him not only involved 
but feeling well enough and feeling physically good enough to play as well as he can do. That's what they need because without Benzema, we've seen it over the past three games for Real Madrid, when they haven't had him because of injury, they've scored one goal. In three games, they've scored one goal. Now, of course, Vinicius has been much improved this season. they got a great midfield. We know all about that, but they rely on Benzema. He is their talisman. He can carry them at times and his availability and the way he plays will definitely determine how well Real Madrid can compete. Because when you are looking at the two teams head-to-head and the potential lineups heading into this game, what we are likely going to see from Paris Saint-Germain is Kayla Navas in goal. Now, of course, it's a big decision there for Pochettino, Navas or Donnarumma. Very nice choice to have to make. Two top-quality keepers, but it's believed to be Navas who's going to get the nod. It's going to be Mendes and Hakimi in the full-back areas. Hakimi is a fantastic sign of a PSG. He's been so, so good on that right Right side this season, Marquinhos and Kimpembe at centre back. Good partnership there between the two of them. In midfield, you've got Verratti, you've got Paredes, probably Danilo as well. That third midfield place is very much up for grabs. But I think with that midfield, you shouldn't have the problems that PSG have been having. That's what I mean there about Pochettino. They have to do more because you've got Verratti, you've got Paredes, who plays very well with Messi at Argentina. And I just think there that midfield has to do more in this PSG team with the likes of Di Maria, with a Mbappe on either side, and Mbappe, of course, as well, will move centrally when Messi drops off. That is a team, of course, that playing at their best, playing the way that they can and should do, can hurt any team. But will PSG turn up against Real Madrid? Because on the side of Carlo Angelotti, he has got a full squad of players to choose from, with Thibaut Courtois, of course, starting in goal, Alaba and Militao at centre-back. Those two have been very solid throughout the season. Hall at right back and they'll be very very glad to welcome back Mendy there coming in at left back of course that midfield the ever dependable trio that Angelotti thoroughly relies on with Casemiro Modric and indeed Tony Kroos and the front three Vinicius from the left Benzema they expect to lead the line although like I say we still don't know if he will be 100% to play and Asensio taking up that position on the right hand side he's chipped in with a few more goals this season and I think when you look at the two together there is a lot of quality out there there's a lot of individual talent of course it's going to come down to who is the more complete who is the more organized as well as a collective and I think what makes this game actually so interesting what makes it very very intriguing is the fact that coming into this game I actually don't think either team are feeling that great right now. They're not really bouncing with confidence. Yes, they have the quality. Yes, they have so many good players. But I don't think either of them are firing on all cylinders. Real without Benzema have been labouring of late. PSG have been very inconsistent with the results they've been getting. And that is why this is very much, even in just the first leg, it's a massive game. Whoever can get the upper hand, whoever can get the win here, it could really boost them and almost kickstart the second half of their seasons. And of course, many of you guys who have been asking there about the potential outcome in this game very heavily in favour of Paris Saint-Germain. I've got to say, that's a lot more one-sided than I would have imagined it be. I think, of course, many people would like to see Messi do well. But of course, in the Champions League, writing Real Madrid off, they're always going to be there. They have the experience. They have the know-how, especially under Angelotti again in this competition. And of course, as well, the big, big name that we haven't discussed today, that we haven't talked about there in the teams, the likes of Sergio Ramos. He is not going to be involved for PSG. He's not going to return yet against Real Madrid as he has not been deemed fit to play in this first leg encounter. When it comes to Neymar, of course, another star in what was expected to be that incredible front three, he may be involved. He could be back in the PSG squad but he's not going to start this game. He hasn't played since the end of November. He's only just coming back from that long injury layoff. But certainly still looking to that second leg. He could still have a say in this tie. And that is why right here, I am personally going to go with a match prediction of PSG 1, Real Madrid 1. I actually think here in this first leg that it's going to be quite cagey. Neither team, like I say, are firing on all cylinders. I don't think either team will want to give up too much. They won't want to lose the tie. They won't want to go too far behind this early on. And I think what we're going to see here is a draw to kick off that first leg before the return leg. At the Santiago Bernabeu, Messi returning to the Bernabeu.
what an occasion that will be. And I think it'll all be set up perfectly for that clash. Please let me know all of your predictions and exactly what you are expecting from this mouth-watering occasion. Who's going to score the goals? Who's going to come out on top? Please let me know all those thoughts and predictions down below. And let me know, guys, in the comments if you would like to see a match review of this game. I hope you enjoyed this, even if, of course, Barca are not in the Champions League. Still, we can enjoy the entertainment and know for sure that we're going to be back there soon. I will see you, of course, with plenty more videos to come. And I thank you indeed for your fantastic support. But until next time, we're still going to say it. Vizca, el Barca.